Beep, 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 morning, afternoon, evening. It's lunchtime, actually, because this is a Jester special. I'm having to do Jester specials, because I normally do one in the morning, one in the evening. Because there's so much going on, I can't fit it all in. So I thought I'd do a Jester special today. But I've had to put the lights on, so I've got like, this sort of shadowy thing going on. Because it's bucketing it down. There's an event later, and I'm going. I can't wait. I'm excited. Excited! Right, okay, so, first of all, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Click notifications, so you know when I'm wibbling. And share this, okay? Because... You know, here we go. You've all seen it by now. We know. We love her. Beth. Beth on Sky News. <laughs> Who sat in front of erstwhile Muppet. Ian Anderson. <laughs> Anderson. The Stonewall chair, right? Which he seemed to have a job sitting in. Because years ago when I visited a friend of mine, it wasn't very well. And he was in one of these, you know, hospitals like Arkham. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and he was unwell, terribly unwell. Eventually he got well thankfully, but there was lots of people in there who did this. Because they were unwell. That's what he looked like. He looked like he was unwell, didn't he? He was, you know, sweaty and pale. There's a great picture of him doing the rounds, on which I've stuck with words, the ultimate gender adult grievance gerbil, because he's like this. <laughs> it, was a, it was a glorious interview. They've added some bits now, if you haven't seen the extended bit. Because, you know, this is what, it was, what was going on in his head. Oh, God, she's going to mention sport. Oh, God. Oh, no, not the fetishistic baby-feeding nipple twat. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Oh, no, there's a t tall man on a podium pretending he's a woman. How do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? I can imagine if he'd had a, if he'd had a magic lamp a la Aladdin, he'd have just rubbed it and said, get me the F out of here. <laughs> In fact, I think, Ian, that my advice to you as, 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 uh, as somebody who watched you do what you've just done, I would have feigned um, an attack of explosive diarrhoea and shat myself because it would have been more dignified than what you did. And no and behold, it didn't take very long, did it? Because, he, you know, he had, to, he had to obfuscate and he had to lie and not ask, you know, any proper questions. And he had to force team the trans nonsense with the LGB. And he had to pretend that it was about rainbow laces. And he had to pretend it was about Section 28. And he had to pretend all these things because otherwise the lie would be exposed. And therefore, it wasn't enough for the activists in his own world, right? So he's at his bum spanked by Stonewall. He's the, he's the chair. And they've spanked his bottom, right? I'm the chair of a charity. Nobody spanks my bottom, mate. And he's had to actually issue an apology, right? So Stonewall have issued an apology. The link is in the doobers. On 20th of July, Stonewall chair Ian Anderson was interviewed by Beth Rigby on Sky News. Hmm. The interview was supposed to be an opportunity to talk about 10 years of marriage equality. LGBTQ plus veterans. They, how dare they use that language? That's what they do. See, they co-opt everything. Right, it's nothing to do with gay, gays and lesbians, LGBTQ plus veterans and Rainbow Laces 10. All remarkable moments that deserve recognition and celebration. Really? Really? You think putting Rainbow Laces? Yeah, right, okay. We took part in the interview because Stonewall had always been engaged in difficult conversations on behalf of the LGBTQ plus community. Since when? You've been no debating since 2015. This is a very strange statement to release after Ian Addison's absolute drubbing at the hands of Beth Brigby. It's very strange. The World Leading Equality Act, he called it Equalities, didn't he? Don't. <laughs> the World Leading Equality Act protects many communities, including LGBTQ plus hands, knees and bumps the daisy people. It took years to draft and is finely honed balanced and complex piece of legislation that Stonewall believes work effect, works effectively. If you believe that, why have you been, been mither everybody to get everything changed? Hmm. Sport should be open to everyone, including trans people, and this includes elite sport. Out of hundreds, it is open to everyone. By their sex, you absolutely gender-addled, grievance dribble nonsense mongers. Out of the hundreds of thousands of elite athletes, a small handful are trans. Particularly big hand. <laughs> ah, we believe including trans people and players in policy development is both evidence and research based evidence and research based okay no how about that no no we're not interested in your evidence and research based because it ain't there we know this Fonda Beatles has done loads of stuff on this I mean Kathy they've done extraordinary work on this and they're still wibbling 
Wibble goats, that's all they are. Stonewall believes trans people's rights should be fully respected. What are those then? Give us an explainer, Stonewall, just so we know, because right now we've got an umbrella with eunuchs under it and cross-dressers and transvestites and nicky fumblers, knicker, knicker fumblers. So what else is under there? Is it is everybody that's not heteronormative, isn't it? That's right. Yeah? So what they're saying is Stonewall believes anybody who's not have heteronormative rights should be fully respected. But they won't tell us what those rights are. The right not to be heteronormative? We have that. Right? It's all it's thrust upon some of us, like gay men like me. We don't have a choice. He did that as well, didn't he, Anderson? Well, if that's your preference, not preference, you sick, twisted, vichy gay. So they want trans people's rights to be fully respected. And it is past time that conversations around the trans people's lives should be used as a political tool. The absolute goal of these people, the absolute goal. The Charities Commission needs to shut them down. Instead, we're calling for political leaders to develop a meaningful strategy. What would that be? I've got the strategy for you, right? It begins and ends with one very simple statement. Gender identity doesn't exist. Sex matters. Goodbye. That's your strategy, all right? Um, it should be a meaningful strategy for trans equality that ensures trans people are properly supported, included, and able to participate fully in society. Nobody's stopping you from participating. Nobody. And what do you mean by supported? What should they have, like, free trans bank cards so they can buy their next set of brown knickers and their little pretty pink pants. No? What? What then? What? 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 Do you mean, do you mean people that have some kind of distress? Because we, you know, we already try and deal with those. Unfortunately, the queue's filled with men wanting breasts. Stonewall's chair, Ian Anderson, said, we remain at the forefront of campaigning for trans people's rights. In that case, Ian, you've got nothing to do with gays and lesbians and take those words out of your mouth. So the LGBTQI plus say, hands, knees and bum potato people, have got nothing to do with being gay or lesbian. It is obvious here that nor is Stonewall. They are fully out for trans rights, which is, of course, conversion therapy for gay kids. Um, he said, and then he made an apology. Doesn't take long because he wants to about their body spanked by the high trans. Woo! Golden rain, Mr. Ooh! <laughs> it's all a bit personal service, isn't it? <laughs> right? And he said in his apology, I'm sorry if yesterday's interviews caused concern amongst the LGBTQ plus community. No such thing. And it's allies. That's people allied with something that doesn't exist. My priority is fighting for trans people and securing a trans equality strategy that will support the trans community. So there you go. Goes on television, obfuscates the hell out of everything, doesn't tell much in the way of truth, lies about the movement, um, says that being gay is a choice because he's a homophobe, self-loathing homophobe, and then issues an apology because he wasn't extreme enough the next day, saying, um, I, my priority is fighting for trans people. Is it? That's your priority, is it? Okay, Stonewall, you're done. It's time to shut you down. So then you've got editor's notes, right? Stonewall's current position on key elements of yesterday's discussion are set out below. Equality Act. The Equality Act is a world-class piece of legislation. Since it came into force, it has provided an effective defence against discrimination in employment and the provision of goods and services for people who hold one or more protected characteristics. This is legislation that works well and of which Britain can be proud. We do not think the Equality Act should be reviewed, but we do think the statutory code of practice could clearly include intersex people, asexual people and non-binary people. See, this is what they do. You have to be very careful here because this is what they do. They use they don't use the act itself. They'll use procedures and policy to go beyond the law. There is no protection for these people that they mentioned. Right. Non-binary nut jobs, asexual um, person fumblings. Right. All those fumblers. And then people who are intersex. DSD. VSD, right? Don't include them in this nonsense. Stonewall, you're just vile. It works well because it understands that people can experience discrimination on multiple grounds and it treats all of those grounds equally. We do not believe that people's rights are in competition. Good God Almighty. Really? Good God Almighty. Then they've got single sex exemptions. The Equality Act 2010 already supports the operation of single-sex services, where this is a proportionate means of achieving a legitimate, legitimate, legitimate aim. It also permits the exclusion of trans people from those single-sex services, where there is a proportionate means of achieving a legitimate aim. They were just filling the paragraph at that point, weren't they? This means that trans inclusion is the universal practice in day-to-day single-sex spaces, such as toilets and changing rooms. But trans inclusion is not a universal practice in single-sex specialist services. Get it? See? Men wanting to get into women's spaces, because that's what it's about. He never mentioned trans men, did he? Never mentioned the LARPing women, all the, all the young girls with ROGD. Didn't mention them, did he? As Beth Rigby pointed out, in 2015, we recommended for the removal of these clauses. 
in a submission to a parliamentary inquiry based on consultation with trans people at the time. You mean people who were trans at the time or with trans people at the time? Because for the vast majority of them, all they've got to do is take off their knickers and their bra and their hair, wash off the makeup, and they're just a bloke, which of course is what they always are. It is really important to say that we do not advocate for the removal of single sex exemptions. When the Equality Act was first introduced, Stonewall did. That was because we were worried that they would be applied to a blanket in a blanket way and be used to wholesale exclude trans women from many single sex spaces. Men. Wholesale exclude men from many single sex spaces. That's right. That's right. That's what we are going to do. We are going to get that back. We know that has not been the case. The bar set in the Equality Act, which is that trans women and trans men, although it mostly used around trans women, access to women's spaces should only be restricted as a proportionate means of achieving a legitimate aim. People aren't excluded from the toilet because of their trans status. They're excluded because they're men. Right? You understand that, right? I'm a bloke. Some woman comes in the toilet. I'm going to go, what are you doing here, madam? You know, I'm not going to smack her in the face. I'm just going to say, this, the women's is next door. Yes, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gay man. You aren't. You're a woman. Get in the women's. It's next door. Right? You, a woman does that to a man? Right? Possibly with a fetish or a paraphilia. What do you think is going to happen? This is Stonewall. Red in tooth and claw. The enemy. Homophobia. Misogyny. Absolute disregard for the safety of women and girls. That is what this is. Okay? That is what it is. It's then got... In the last section, there's more to it than this. Go and read it yourselves. But working with anti-trans groups. Stonewalls always and will always sit down with anyone who has a respectful position towards the LGBTQ plus community. Replace LGBT plus nonsense words with, with we, we will always sit down with anyone who has a respectful position towards gender identity, ideology and queer theory and wants to advance our progress and build alliances to do so. Stonewall, Stonewall's ethos was and remains that the, organi the organisation that is in the room just get stuffed. Stop talking to them. Just cut them off. That said, we've never used our precious resources on dialogue with people who are vehemently against, and they have to use the LGBTQ plus community because so they want to say, you know, men LARPing as women. And that will remain true. Our focus is on working with politicians and decision makers, business and societal leaders who can make a difference to LGBTQ plus people's lives. In that last sentence is essentially, we're not going to talk to LGB alliance. We're not going to talk to anybody that doesn't agree with our insane mad, dangerous, iatrogenic belief system which has harmed children, damaged women and damaged gay men and damaged gay women. This is why they won't admit to it. They can admit to it because if they do, they have to admit to everything that follows and then, boy oh boy, will the lawsuit start. If you're a business and you're involved with these people, you need to get out now. If you're a civil service organisation, you need to get out now. If you're Rishi Sunak, Kemi Badnock, whoever the, uh, however it may be that's dealing with it, you need to make a statement saying that your recommendation is that organisations do not work with Stonewall. The Charity Commission needs to do an investigation. They are no longer fit for purpose. And at that point, I shall leave you with the Jester at Lunchtime update. I'm going to try and do some more and get them lined up so we can keep up with a frantic pace at the moment. But have a lovely day. I'll see you later.